Hi guys, how you doing today? We're going to have a little bit of fun today with some simple 2 millimeter leather cord. Now, I know this is something a little different for me. Normally I'm doing all that big assemblage and colorization, but I love leather and I love wire and I love beading and these things are very popular now. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I do with 2 millimeter leather cord that we carry at Bisa Boutiques, this Indian leather to make a simple necklace base to do whatever else I want to do with it. So I can have the leather and I can have a great big long charm string as well. So come on over here and I'll show you because I've got a bunch of ideas. Okay guys, so I'm back to show you the basic leather cord necklace which is absolutely nothing to it. Just wait till I show you. But what you can do with it after that, it's all about that, what you can do with it after that. Like the one I was wearing, just to show you up close here. Um, actually, I did this for a live uh, session video a few weeks ago. So if you were there, you probably got to see it. Um, but I didn't like how it was finished at the bottom. So I kind of let it lay there for a while. You know, it's a good thing to do sometimes when you're not quite sure what you want to do to finish it. And I came back with it this morning, and I had received these great big um, uh, rhinestone lobster clasps, which are so spectacular. I thought, huh, I'm going to put that on the bottom of this Art Deco style um, watch from 1928, which I believe if you put a new battery in it would probably work, but I didn't do it yet. But I'm going to. And then I took my little charm string that I made, which we've discussed charm strings many times. It's just beads hanging from a little piece of rollo. Then you pick it up in the middle and hang it as like a cascade. Very, very pretty effect. Let's see if I'm, yeah, I'm in there. So um, I love this and it's going nowhere. It's staying with me. I love it. Um, also, I showed you uh, in the video, the live video, how to wrap the ends with wire instead of using crimps, um, which we'll do a short video here on the regular produce videos on that soon. I just need to get a little bit better at it because I haven't done it for a while. <laughs> and I want it to be really perfect for you guys. But anyway, I'm going to keep this one. I just love how it just flows. But anyway, it all starts out with the necklace part. So let's make one, okay? First of all, you've got to start out with a piece of 2 millimeter cord, 20 to 22 inches, depending on how big the neck is you're working with. I always go with a little bit extra because, like, why not? You know, you might as well go with a little bit extra because, you know, it just gives you a little bit. It'd be just a shame to lose your whole piece of cord, you know, if you didn't, if you didn't get enough. So go with a little bit extra. The cord's very inexpensive. And you can't afford to do it. Okay, so then what I do after I cut it is I double it. And I try to get it, you know, on each side in the place it's supposed to be because this cord kind of wants to roll on you a little bit. I get it, I kind of pull it a little bit taut to get it kind of used to going where I want it to, although that's no guarantee. <laughs> and then I pinch the loop at the end as tight as I can because we're going to make what I believe is called a lark's head knot. So here's how I do it. I put my little loop over top of my little uh, piece that I'm going to use for my centerpiece. And then I come around and watch this because I'm clumsy, but I do it. And that's the main thing. And I try to get both ends at the same time, and I try to get them straight. You can straighten them out if they don't go straight, but it's just kind of a pain. And then I push them up through there. Okay, I'm good. I've so got pretty it. much you can straighten it before. Yeah, no, here's see. But I'm still go I'm still okay. I believe I am. Sometimes when I go to do this, I'm like really good at it right away, and other times not so much, and it takes a while, but eh. Okay, so now I've got the Now I want to make sure these two cords are pulled straight so it doesn't go loosey-goosey on me. And then I pull it up as tight as I can. Okay. Lark's head knot. And you can show it this way if you like. Or this way. It's up to you. I prefer this way, but that's just me. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, so now I'm going to go out to the ends. And I want to put a crimp up against this to hold it really nice and tight. So I'm going to go out to the ends, and I'm going to take one of these nice uh, Tierra Cast Pewter crimps. They're kind of spendy. 
So I've been looking for another alternative. Another thing you can do is you can just cut this cord with just a pair of sharp shears. So it's easier if it's even, and that was just fine. Could you try using wire instead? Yeah, I did wire on this one. See? Okay. You know, but it's. But I meant for that area. At the, yeah, you could do that. Why not? You could do it. It's just for me a little more fiddly. A little bit more fiddly. But, um. Yeah, I like using these crimps, but yeah, the wire is as much less expensive. I do have some crimps coming in very soon that are not as uh, expensive, and I hope that'll work for us. I love the Tierra Cast stuff. I love using it. Some of it is not expensive to use, but these little crimps are, and the reason that they are. Even though they're worth the money, in my humble opinion, you can see I'm just threaded that on and I'm just pinching it down with flat nose pliers because they're crimpable. That's another reason I like them. Not all are. Okay. They're, they're not easy to make. And, and Mr. Bernie from 1928 explained to me why, and that's why he doesn't make them. And that's why I don't have any from them. But I will have others soon. And um, I have lots of places I can get them. So. But for now, I'm going to use the crimp. But yes, you could use the wire, absolutely. And if you use the wire, what you want to do is you want to go down and wrap going up. Don't like start here and then wrap down. You want to start at the very base and wrap going up as far as you want to go. That's the best way to do it. Okay, so that's it for now. So I've got my little ornament on there. Pretty, pretty. Now all I have to do is finish my ends. I'm not sure if I brought any um, uh, clasp down here. Maybe not. But, you know, we don't need it for this. I mean, everybody knows what a clasp looks like. This is how you finish it. Okay, so I push it through the end. Get the end. Push it through the crimp this way. Then I push it through this way. Till I have a hole about that big. See, let's let's measure it and see just exactly how big that is. Yeah, it's maybe a quarter inch. You can make it smaller if you want, but I prefer it. That's just about right. Okay. So then I crimp it again, and I just start in like this. There's really no pattern to this piece, so you're not gonna you know do anything to it that you know just ruins a design or something when you crimp and press down on it. And they're very, very secure. I just love them. Okay, so I've got that one. And when I, when I do them, the way I like to do it is I like to, because, of course, this is wider, you know, but I don't want to have a tail sticking out of there. It will just look very unfinished and clumsy. Some people do that. I'm not critical of them, but I prefer not to see it. So I try to do it so that it stays tucked up in there. And it is nicely tucked up. But you have to make sure that you have enough under there so that when you crimp it, it's not going to come loose. Okay, I'll do the other side now, same way. So here I'm bringing it up through one, and then I'm going to go down. I want to go this way. And push the other one through. And then what I do to get it where I want it to, I should have started out with a smaller but you can just you can just push it up with your thumb too and kind of guide it to where you want it to be and then you can push this through a little bit more see it's coming through on the end i don't really want that but i'll fix it at the end i'm really kind of new to working with this but i tell you i love it this evening i hope i don't have to do too much stuff because i have a bunch of ideas from getting ready for this and I want to go up and make. And it really won't take me very long either. So if you can come on Sunday to the live session at 4.30 p.m. Well, actually, it's going to be changed. I don't know what the time is right now for this week. Um, come to the creative group or, or go to the YouTube community. And I'll tell you, it has to be a little bit later. It'll be around 6.37 because um, we have a dear friend who passed away. And we need to go to the funeral, both Javi and I. 
So anyway, so now I'm going to crimp that down. But if you come, I will have more made and we'll talk more about this. Or if you're anxious to see more about it, too, you can go back a few videos to the live session from two, three weeks ago. And we have some there, too. Okay, so I've got both of my, you know, hanging spots back here. So all I have to do is add jump rings and a clasp. Which I have jump rings, but I failed to bring the clasp down. And I don't think I have any down here except... Um, old choxy ones. I don't know. I was, whoops. I hate to move this too much because it might go. Yeah, I only have choxy and, and brass offs down here. That's okay. Um, you can see basically everybody knows what a, a lobster class looks like, so that's fine. So we'll put that on there and you'll be able to see it. So it's going to fit up really nice. It's going to be, um, it's going to hang down like maybe an eight inch necklace wood and then it's got the little drop on it and with the drop all that is this is an end of a toggle clasp and they come in handy so many times to use just the loop part of your toggle because you can do so much with them so instead of using this washer which is a little bit spendy and this was not um, I could save a little bit plus then I got the advantage of this hanging loop at the bottom and then what I did to make it fun and tactile is I hung some beads from this clasp. Lobs, big ornamental lobster clasp. I love doing that. I love taking a part and using it for something else completely than what it was meant for. And actually, that goes to a little word I want to share with you today called juxtaposition. I'm going to write it here, put it here so maybe you can see it. J U X T A P O S I T I O N. And that means two things being seen or placed close together with contrasting effect. And that's why, for example, I like leather with these bright blingy findings, because that contrasts. I like to use a lobster claw clasp or a part of a toggle for doing something else than the expected. Um, to me, that adds excitement to your jewelry. You can make a very simple piece, and yet, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. Um, you can make a very simple piece, and yet, it doesn't look simple. It's intriguing. People stop to look at it. And if you sell what you make, it helps you to sell it by far. It's a good, good thing to do. Okay, I have a couple more I'm going to show you for today than what I did. Um, this was the original one that I made a few weeks ago. And I tell you what, I wear this constantly. Everybody stops to look at it. Everybody wants to buy this part. You can't. It's a piece of broken jewelry from 1928, but this is real marcasite, so I'd been saving it for just the right thing. And I made a very simple necklace. Everything we did today, I did here. I put a washer on it instead of a toggle, this piece. And we do have them at the site. <clears throat> and then I took and made another loop of leather, and I put another uh, crimp on it, and then I put this crimp on the top that has a hanging hole. And then I just stuck a little something-something on there, and there we go. It's a very, very attractive piece. Everybody comments about it. So that's an example. What I'm telling you is something that it doesn't necessarily take a long time to make. There's nothing difficult about it, but it's striking in some way and also looks really good on just about anybody of any age when they put it on. It fits just about anybody. This certainly does. Another thing I tried this morning was this on the dark uh, black-brown cord and the Indian leather. I just made the the piece like normal but then I took some um, 18 I did 18 gauge wire on this silver wire which we I'm pretty sure we have some at the side if we don't we'll have it soon or you can just use 20 and I know we have that and then I use the little patina beads that are new at our place just strung them on there and then I hung a little pearl in the middle so that's a case of juxtaposition there's contrast there you have these earthy sort of patina beads and then you have a funny little Baroque pearl out of our pearl mix. If you haven't tried our pearl mix yet, you want to do that because it's really inexpensive and you get goobers of pearls of all kinds and it's vintage. It's vintage Japanese, which is good. They made the best pearls. If you haven't gotten any, you should come over and get it. It's not very expensive. It's like $9.95, $11.95, something. Mm -hmm. And you get a quarter pound, so well, that's a no-brainer, right? So I made this and um, 
maybe on Sunday I'll take and I'll make this from the start because it's really cool the way when you make this you could also hammer it. Javi likes to hammer her wire a lot. And then I made this guy. I had this little pendant lay in there and I thought, huh, I'm really big about using toggles in a different way. Now I'm probably not going to leave this on here because um, I don't have any way to antique this and this is like an antique pewter. It just is a little bit too bright and shiny to look right with it. But the point is this. You can use a toggle in really fun ways. You could hang that toggle like it was a pendant from there. Take the other part of it, loop a little bit of chain through, and go through a pendant. Isn't he cute? He's a steampunk kitty. <laughs> He's something I had laying around. I don't have any more of them. I might get them though. Somebody has interest in them. They're not very expensive. But anyhow, um, so I put him on there. It reminds me a lot of a Victorian fob. The guys had the chain and the little ornament hanging from the end. And they had another hook that had their pocket watch that went down in their pocket. Um, but anyway, you just take this through here then and hang it. And because the bar on this one is so long, it is really, really secure. You bend around and move around. This is not coming off of here. You could do this to make earrings. So you can make the coolest earrings these, that way as well so we'll talk about that another time too but this was an idea I had I just wish that that toggle was not so bright in this case but eh, juxtaposition right so here we go here are the ones I have made recently I'll oh, see I got this one going the other way no no it's supposed to go this way all right yeah I always like when I do that lark's head art. I like it to go this way in the front but you don't have to now this one wrapped a little different because this piece is thick so that's why that's a little tighter and then here's this one with I our have to bring them down a little bit. okay bring them down a little bit now there can you, you see them there you go I'm sorry guys it's hard for me to judge that's why I always have Javi help me mm -hmm. okay so there's one two three four five I, I don't know this one's my favorite but for something just to throw on and go I've been wearing this one a lot you guys got to try it we have the Indian leather two millimeter Indian leather you get uh, five yards I think it is in a pack we have it in this really beautiful vibrant red uh, like a cherry red we have it in turquoise blue we have it in a mustard color kind of like this but a little lighter we have it in this color which is the brown black which is awesome and there's a variegated one that's really really beautiful and there's one more I think we have six of them now very very inexpensive and five yards is a lot to play with and see if you like it we do have these tear cast pieces um, I have other things coming in we have lots of ornaments the Beast of 1928 ornaments focals would be awesome on this um, this happens to be our classic gold we just had some new pieces come in very recently it looks very much like the old Haskell finish so you might want to check that out. These we don't have at this time. I will get some. They're a little bit spendy, but I think they're worth it. Sometimes you just do it. I know my price would be about better than just buying anybody else's when I do get them. Anyway, so that's all I have to say about that today. Come on over on Sunday. We will let you know more about what time. I think it's probably going to be closer to 7. We just have to see how long that the funeral is going to be. And... Uh, Come and join us for a little bit more fun on this. And don't forget, every Sunday we have a giveaway. And you could win. All you have to do is show up and comment during the live stream. And not only that, don't forget, please like the video. It means an awful lot to me to see those likes on there. You have no idea how much that lifts me up, especially if I'm not having the best day. And I see those likes, and I'm like, yes, things are all going to be okay. They're going to be great. And then if you can comment on the video, if you have something to add that you think could add to what I've done here, by all means, be kind and, and share. We're happy with that as long as you're kind. And subscribe to our channel. We have over 250 te teaching videos for free on the YouTube channel, Be Sue Boutiques, and it goes back over nine years now. You can watch me get old. <laughs> anyway, so come on over and subscribe because YouTube will make a little noise on your computer and you'll know we're coming on. Alrighty, that's all I have to say for today. So maybe I'll see you on Sunday. And have a great weekend, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.